Hello and welcome to the session. In this session we discuss the following question which says, A small firm manufactures gold rings and chains. The total number of rings and chains manufactured per day is at most 24. It takes 1 hour to make a ring and 30 minutes to make a chain. The maximum number of hours available per day is 16. If the profit on a ring is rupees 300 and that on a chain is rupees 190, find the number of rings and chains that should be manufactured per day so as to earn the maximum profit. Make it an LPP and solve it graphically. Let us now proceed with the solution. Let us write the given data in a tabular form. Like in the question it's given that a small firm manufactures gold rings and chains. So the two items would be rings and chains. It's given that it takes one hour to make a ring and 30 minutes to make a chain. So time taken to make a ring is written as one and to make chain 30 minutes are taken which means half an hour. We are also given that the profit on the ring is rupees 300. So we write here 300 and profit on the chain is rupees 190. We write here 190. As we are supposed to find the number of rings and chains that should be manufactured per day. So we can take the number of rings manufactured per day as x and the number of chains manufactured per day would be CY. So we suppose let the number of rings manufactured per day be X units and let The number of chains manufactured per day be Y units. So the company makes X rings per day and Y chains per day to maximize the profit. It's given in the table that a profit on a ring is rupees 300. So, profit obtained on X rings would be equal to rupees 300X. Then, as the profit obtained on one chain is rupees 190. So, the profit obtained on Y chains is equal to rupees 190Y. Therefore, we say that the total profit is equal to rupees 300X plus 190Y. As in the question, it's also given that the total number of rings and chains manufactured per day is at most 24. So this means we have x plus y is less than or equal to 24, where x is the number of rings manufactured per day and y is the number of chains manufactured per day. So x plus y less than or equal to 24. Thus, we have obtained one constraint for the linear programming problem. As in the question it's given that it takes one hour to make a ring and half an hour to make a chain. So, number of hours required to make x rings is equal to x into 1 that is x hours. 
then the number of hours required to make y chains is equal to half into y that is equal to 1 upon 2 into y hours. Also in the question we are given that the maximum number of hours available per day is 16. So therefore, x plus 1 upon 2 into y is less than or equal to 16. Thus we have obtained another constraint and this could also be written as 2x plus y is less than or equal to 32. Also the number of chains and rings cannot be negative. So x is also greater than or equal to 0 and y is also greater than or equal to 0. Now, the mathematical formulation of the given linear programming problem is given as maximize the total profit that is say z equal to rupees 300x plus 190y so we have maximize z equal to 300x plus 190y subject to the constraints given as first is x plus y less than equal to 24 this is our first constraint let this be equation 1 then the next constraint is 2x plus y less than equal to 32 let this be equation 2 then we have the non-negative constraints as x greater than or equal to 0, y greater than or equal to 0. Let this be equation 3. So we have made a linear programming problem. Now we have to solve this problem graphically. Our first step of solving this linear programming problem graphically is to find the feasible region determined by these constraints. So for this, First we need to graph this inequality for which we will graph the equation x plus y equal to 24. Now putting x equal to 0, y equal to 0 in inequality 1 we get 0 plus 0 is less than or equal to 24 that is 0 is less than or equal to 24 which is true. Therefore, we say that the origin with coordinates 0, 0 lies in the region x plus y less than equal to 24. So this region, this shaded portion below the line x plus y equal to 24 represents the inequality x plus y less than equal to 24. Now next we will graph the inequality 2x plus y less than equal to 32. So for this we will graph the equation 2x plus y equal to 32. This line joining the points C and D represents the equation 2x plus y equal to 32. Now we will check if the origin lies in the region of the inequality 2. So for this put in x equal to 0, y equal to 0 in in equation 2 we get 2 into 0 plus 0 is less than or equal to 32 that is 0 is less than or equal to 32 which is true therefore we say that the origin 0 0 lies in the region given by the inequality 
टू एक्स प्लस वाई लेस देन इक्वल टू थर्टी टू द स्ट्रेडिड पोर्शन इन रेड रिप्रेजेंट्स द रीजन और द इनइक्वालिटी टू एक्स प्लस वाई लेस देन इक्वल टू थर्टी टू नाउ वी हैव ग्राफ द इनइक्वालिटीज और द कंस्टेंट्स एक्स प्लस वाई लेस देन इक्वल टू ट्वेंटी फोर एंड टू एक्स प्लस वाई लेस देन इक्वल टू थर्टी टू लेट्स नाउ कंसिडर द कंस्टेंट्स एक्स ग्रेटर देन इक्वल टू जीरो एंड वाई ग्रेटर देन इक्वल टू जीरो Now the non-negative constraint x greater than equal to zero is the y-axis and the region on its right-hand side, and y greater than equal to zero is the x-axis. the region above the x axis so this y axis and the region to the right of the y axis is x greater than equal to 0 and the x axis and the region above the x axis is the region y greater than equal to 0 now let's determine the common region determined by all these constraints Consider this point of intersection of the line joining the point C and D, that is the line 2x plus y equal to 32, with the x-axis, that is this point, the point E, with coordinates 16, 0. So now this region ED, BO, E is the feasible region. So now we have ED. B O E is the feasible region determined by the constraints, and as you can see, this feasible region is bounded. Now that we have obtained the feasible region. We will now find the corner points of the feasible region, which are the points E, D, B, and O. So we have the corner points of the feasible region as first is the point E with coordinates 16, 0. Then we have the point D with coordinates 8, 16. Point B with coordinates 0, 24, and the point O with coordinates 0, 0. Now next we will evaluate the value of the objective function given by z equal to 300x plus 190y, which is the total profit at the corner points. First we have the corner point E with coordinates 16, 0. So for this, the value of the objective function z would be equal to 300 into 16 plus 190 into 0, and so this would be equal to 4800. Now next corner point is the point D with coordinates 816. The value of the objective function z is equal to 300 into 8 plus 190 into 16. And so, this would be equal to 5,440. Now, the next corner point is the point B with coordinates 0.24. So, Z would be equal to 300 into 0 plus 190 into 24. And so, this would be equal to 4,560. Then we have the point O with coordinates 0.0. Value of the objective function z would be equal to 300 into 0 plus 190 into 0, and so this would be equal to 0. Now, of these values of the objective function obtained at the corner points of the feasible region, we find that this is the maximum value and this is the minimum value. So we take the maximum value as capital M equal to 
5440 and the minimum value small m equal to 0. So we have the maximum value of the profit function or you can say the objective function is 5440 at the corner point D with coordinates 8, 16. Now since in the question it was given to us that we are supposed to maximize the profit, so we will consider only the maximum value of the objective function Z. Thus we can now say that the maximum profit of the firm would be rupees 5440 if it manufactures eight rings and sixteen chains per day. Since we had assumed x to be the number of rings manufactured by the firm per day and y to be the number of chains manufactured by the firm per day and we obtained the value of x as 8 and y as 16 Thus we say that if the firm manufactures 8 rings and 16 chains per day then the maximum profit earned would be rupees 5440 So this is our final answer this completes the session. Hope you have understood the solution of this question.